Hey, we're back. Hey. Hello, we are live now. Yeah. yeah. All right. We Welcome snacks. back, everybody. Uh, Welcome. It is time to return. Um, there has basically been nothing but like constant uh, mushroom and puns. Yeah, I'm extremely angry good. at it's that very right good. now. It's very good. I am actually a little nervous about the art Laura is going to make out of this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. I am excited. So the uh, when we last uh, when we last left our heroes, the spores were spreading through the mist. Um, and you all kind of feel this like, um, actually, I'm going to randomly roll to determine whether Copernicus is breathing enough to be affected. <laughs> I like that that's a roll you have to make. Because he doesn't have to breathe, but he does. Like, you know, you got to talk and stuff, right? So you inhale and exhale and... Um, yeah, what? Yeah, are you yeah, saying you Copernicus are. doesn't have to breathe? Uh, I thought he was just a regular grandpa. Uh, regular grandpa. Um, yeah, we all know there's nothing at all unusual about Copernicus. No, he's just regular. Um, and, uh, yeah, so um, all of you uh, start to feel a little, maybe a little lightheaded, a little, Ooh. Ooh. a little kind of, oh, things are interesting. Um, Tromlin, you are spectacularly feeling this way. Because now, now you're already fairly drunk, but also slightly stoned. Um, and uh, this enables you all to hear the voices in your heads. Oh, that's nice. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Finally. I'm immune to yeah. poison, but I guess this isn't poison. This is good time. This, this is, is the, fun. This is the, the rapport spores of these myconids. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, and so you all kind of see some, like, like it's, it's like synesthesia. There's color, but also it's kind of sound and scent, and it's just in your head. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a certain ability that you have to parse this and actually kind of understand a bit. And it goes along with these gestures that the that the mushroom people are doing, um, that are uh, uh, thanking you for your gift. Oh, I could be worse than. Are the oh, mushrooms talking the to anybody okay. else? Oh. Yeah, what voices are we? Are we just hearing thank yous, basically? It's not even voices. Like it's like synesthesia. It's like a com It's like you're smelling things that represent. Uh, word concepts to you or your I'm just I'm just surviving on colors on yeah just chilling I reply Sylvan it is our pleasure and honor anyone else understand Sylvan I think Glorpa does I think I, oh I do yeah I think Glorpa huh. has Sylvan as a language yeah and I also say um it is my pleasure that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a, a, a train ran on her. Is there anything involving mycanids <laughs> or mushrooms on my uh, bucket list? <laughs> Just curious. I mean, Mushroom your lady. bucket list is very different than Glorpa's. Uh, <laughs> but I would say um, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. Like, there might be some crazy shit on there, like, you know, getting on with an arch fay or something. I feel like Glorba saw that mushroom dance part of Fantasia and said, I can make this filthy. <laughs> that it already is filthy. You just need to be in the right mindset. It's true. Now I mean, you are. Because, like, the thing about Glorba <laughs> and plants is the plants are already naked. That's the natural state. Never seen a sweater on a plant before. Nope. <laughs> There's no such thing as a Mike and it strip show. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the item on my list. Uh, <laughs> create, a <laughs> create a Mike and it strip show. show. <laughs> you have to put clothes on him first. <laughs> Putting the clothes on is part of the sexiness, though. And then, <laughs> then you can take them off. 
Yeah, can, I, right? can I borrow some of your tiny little swashbuckling vests? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dress the mushroom up. Do this right. So you um, uh, you get a sense of questioning, uh, and it's very clear to all of you that they are asking why. Why are you here? Mm. As they all like tilt their I little don't mushroom remember, caps. But I'm definitely here to party now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like Lorpa's answer is going to be different from the rest of the party. <laughs> I'm mostly here to fuck plants, and you guys are helping. Well, it just feels kind of nice right now. Uh, I, while drunk, will still attempt to answer in Sylvan. <laughs> we are on a mission. We are attempting to cause there to be less bloodshed, uh, thanks to two different posing groups of brigands. One is apparently serving the Raven Queen. Okay, so at the men so so first of all, the the reaction to Fetid and Glorpa's comments about you know, hey, this is all about partying, uh, was a general sense of this is good. <laughs> um, as soon as you mention the Raven Queen, the atmosphere turns on a dime. Uh, oh, you're harsh in there. You're harsh in it. Yeah, it goes mm. from like this like. Yes, good. Welcome to the feeling and the to uh to a uh, uh danger bad. No. We do not Ice, I have cold, nothing to death. do with that mission. Just <laughs> I don't even know that. Professor's walking man. away from the group a we little bit. We have no interest <laughs> in bringing any danger to you. In fact, if that's why we bring you this gift, we want you to have nothing but pleasure and happiness in your life. What did you say again about the Raven Queen? You just said that there you were on a mission to stop to, to stop to stop the the, the stop a yeah, cult. No. And we didn't say I'm stopping the Raven Queen. I'm not stupid. I said that we're dealing oh, with two bands of brigands. One who's uh, just we're trying to stop bloodshed, and one of the brigands a group serves the Raven Queen. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the, 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 you you get the feeling that they are just reacting to like the the name the of name. the Raven Queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. just, I guess they're not allies of hers. So. Well, it's, yeah, it's okay. Okay. you are I, very I, much getting the impression they are not allies of the Raven. I apologize okay. if I can make it up to you by I pull out some of my baked goods off you sweet treats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do they have mouths? They're getting taking wine. Well, Doesn't yeah. matter. No, that's true. Uh, hey, no, in fact, like they they've hey. ignored the wine. Like since you basically offered it to them and set it on the ground, they were all day. Oh, thank you for this gift, and reacted like it was a ritual sort of thing, and then it just not even gone near it. Hey, hey, Trollin. Uh, I will, put, I will add the the, the uh, very sweet rolls and, and uh, confections to the pile. Trollin, say this is my apology. I did not mean to upset you. I just did not want to lie to you as we come through your area as well. Do you remember that night after I uh, uh, won that match last season? We had that big party. You, mm-hmm. you like, you had like the flute. I think oh. that's what this needs. I, I, will out, um, I will pull out my pipe, my pan pipe. Oh my god! And start playing. Shit is going off. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey. I would um, definitely. I would definitely like a. Uh, uh, a, performance? a performance check there. <laughs> First of all, give me a persuasion check. <laughs> okay, do I have um, any penalties on that or anything? For being I mean, drunk? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna give you a straight up disadvantage on all the rolls here. <laughs> anything that requires significant skill is gonna be a little hard. Uh, That's in, your, fair. in your current it's, state. Yep. Okay, it's not okay. I still got a brightest. twenty-one Jeez, on, on persuasion. Nice. For yeah, you, I mean. I'm not surprised. You have a plus ten persuasion. So, yeah. Um, so that's basically on your charmed uh, uh, speech. So you basically <laughs> uh, immediately try and undo any kind of like, oh, the Raven Queen. Yeah, we don't we don't like that one. So it's all good. I'm just, you know. So you're 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 you you turn up the charm uh, quite successfully um, and put out the the rolls. Um, the larger uh, the the circle of uh, fungal fellows that has been, uh, that was initially here, are kind of drawing in uh, a bit of a tighter circle around you, um, like looking you, they're all sort of like examining you um, and you see smaller ones, like little like one foot tall little mushroomoid 
humanoid bangles <laughs> coming in a monk between their legs and like coming Aww. in and investigating the treats you've left. And you actually well, see a couple of them. A little bit. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, they'll put. Yeah, they'll they'll put like their. Um, they'll put their. Uh, um, uh, like feet or whatever, like their their appendages <laughs> on these these uh, uh, sweet rolls and stuff. And you basically will see them decompose these like baked goods cool. and stuff. And the the myconids will get a little bigger. That are that are partaking of this. That's um, simultaneously very gross and yeah. very cute. It's very cute. Ugna has yeah. like crouched um, down will... so she can see a bunch of them on their level. I will I'll turn yeah, to them, the larger ones that may I at least offer a song as an apology for my misstep. There's there's no negative response to that. Alright, I'll pull out my uh pan pipes. Performance. <gasps> Oh, is that a? Is that a? Good. That's good. Is it good. net twenty? High rolls. Real high, high rolls roll. is good. My net. My lower one is twenty six. Woo! It's a par. Hey. Trauma, trauma is in his element. Absolutely sick flute solo. Incoming. Hell yes. <laughs> Point out too that some of these these smaller ones, um. Far from looking like like children, there is a range of like one of them is like a wizened looking, like ancient looking thing. Some of them are like smaller, like fresh paste faced like puff body. They're they're extremely variable, right? Yeah. Some of them look how are like All wrinkled like morels and some of them are like, I mean, these are fungoid creatures. I mean, I guess I'll give you a knowledge roll. What do you know yes. about these yeah. things? Probably a lot. Knowledge <laughs> mushrooms. No, this knowledge is a nature mushroom. roll. Oh, there we yeah, go. You can roll me oh, a knowledge uh, nature. Yeah, like sixteen plus seven is a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> you um, these things are probably these are like um, fairy creatures that age differently. Like these things are all definitely older than you. Cool. Um, they're they're yeah, and there's no there's no correlation in like the size of them and how old they are or anything like that. They're like extremely variable fungus creatures. Some of them are just small mushrooms and, and, and some are big mushrooms. And the young would most likely, if there are like like new ones, they wouldn't be out and about. They would be under the earth slash like oh, there grown we go. Yeah. into you know, <laughs> rotten things where they are growing. Um, Glorpa grabs uh, the most wrinkly of the mushrooms that she can find and starts dancing with it to the to the fan flute, <laughs> like sexy Excellent. dancing. Excellent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I like that you clarified. Like it, does, it doesn't have a butt, but it, wherever the butt would be, her hands are all over. Oh my god! It wrinkles for her pleasure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alina, I have a picture for you. Oh, good. Um, I'm just trying to decide. Can I share? If I share, I don't know if I can share my screen without screwing up the. I don't think so. But if you send it to me, I can do the the fan art thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Like, just DM it to me on Twitter. I just I can't. So, like, let me make sure I've I've got this right here. Uh, Tromlin is gonna play on his pan pipes. Yep. And he's gonna drink him some wine. I mean, as soon as you're born, you start dying. So you might as well have a good time. It's true. <laughs> wow, okay, I guess nobody knows that's fine. That's fine. No, sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. I was, funny. I was expecting something about, like, the, 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 that was trauma and plays, the hits just start coming. <laughs> you know don't about? stop I mean, coming. That's, that's where I oh, assumed you were going to go with. Oh, I should have gone. I was going, I was going with cake. I, I <laughs> too, too deep. Uh, I got it. Were you going the distance, Sam? Uh, Alina, I just sent you a, a link to a thing on um, uh, a link to a thing on Discord. Oh, okay. I can't get it on Discord. You have to DM me on Twitter. Oh, I will do that then. Uh, da, 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 da. Because this is going to uh, uh, to give us some pretty pretty good visuals for certain values of good. <laughs> I mean, if you go to that document, 
and uh, scroll down to the fourth page. There is some very good images of the uh, the morels. Oh, good. Effectively. Yep. And this is this is what Glorpa is basically pole dancing on now. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Do you mean to share that picture? Uh, give me a second. I'm going to see if I can share it over here. On. Uh, but carry on. Yeah. Um, and Tromlin has made an excellent role on the uh, actual music. And so the uh, these fairy creatures are extremely delighted. Uh, with this state of affairs, this is exactly what they like. Mm. Uh, is they that like picture the party. Up? Yep. You said the morale morale is high. <laughs> I mean, so are we. Uh. <laughs> well, that's what we're going to be um, uh, shortly uh, determining here. So, uh, oh, there we go. That's shared. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, yes, indeed, uh, we need to determine if that is the case. So it's time for saving throws. As they poison us. Oh, oh, I have rolled a three. <laughs> oh, great. Cool. <laughs> Which still gives me a nine. Well, I rolled but... a... That's good, that's um, good. Oh, there you go. I, I rolled a one. It... These are constitution saves. Okay. Honestly, uh... Ugna would relent. She is here for this trip. I'm just checking uh, so whether did, any so of this counts. For, yeah, oh, none no. of this counts as Nat poison. One. That, that's a one. Nat a one. Poison. Nat oh, 20. Oh. There you go. No, oh, no, five. five. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We are all getting stoned. I rolled a nine. <laughs> I have so, a 12. All right. I have a nine. I also rolled a nine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the high roll of the party was is a, a 12? Na- is a 12. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um. So that's... Hallucinate. And I roll a disadvantage, I will add. Otherwise, I would have agreed. Oh, my God. Okay, so... Well, this is uh, how we die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y'all had inspiration. Eight None sessions of us is a good one, Capita. We wanted this to happen. Good. Well, no more adventuring is getting done today. I think this is effectively a good time to consider this a long rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh... Because even though this is going to be uh, full on uh, uh, fucking fairy party happening here, um, it, it's going to be long enough to give you guys some some respite. <laughs> um, so effectively, everybody's basically incapacitated while you hallucinate now for like the <laughs> the, the the duration. But in our brains, um, we're having an excellent party. Before Perny goes like full deep end, can can he like stash his blood, blood magic dagger somewhere on his person and like a lash uh, grandma to his belt? So like, in the event they're like the the fairy, it is my the grandmother. Fairy, so you would get it. <laughs> 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 so he named oh, the bucket. No. Yeah, can 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 you like safety grandma tie some it. things to him so he doesn't lose them? Especially um, the bucket's very important to him. I will say, uh, actually, I'm going to take your black token and say no. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. Grandma's no, going for a ride. You don't have the presence of mind to do that. You do have the presence of mind, however, and this is also part of that black token. Uh, so you can remove that black token, Lena. Um, All right. You actually said that out loud. So uh, Copernicus actually said, oh, got to secure Grandma. Um, uh, out loud, so we, so we can we can have that be in character that exchange with. Uh, it Robert. is my grandmother. <laughs> um, uh, it wasn't uh, me who said that. It was uh, the mushroom. As you all <laughs> drift, it, as you all drift into uh, into this world, um, so you're basically uh, imagine you're all lying on your backs in the meadow, looking up at just the mist. And the rotating, dancing uh, uh, fungoids and Glorpa is moving around, and and uh, so is Playing. Uh, yeah. Playing and there's like, pipes. and yep. you're full on skipping 
Like the satyr, you're doing the satyr skip with the pan pipes. This is peak um, fairy. Yeah, and they're like <laughs> like will o' the wisps and other uh, uh, little glowing things start coming toward to this area and like dancing in the in the air above. Um, and it just, uh, yeah, it just becomes like a like a cut scene from Legend. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're pretty sure you saw Billy Barty dancing around somewhere, and <laughs> maybe Tom Cruise is there. Uh, uh, I don't know how many people don't remember Legend. I'm old. Vaguely, um, it's been a long but, time. Uh, it's some um, studio Ghibli shit in here. It's good. Yeah, it's there's there's yeah yeah it's like. Legend means Studio Ghibli. I'm yeah. picturing though, if you if you have seen Legend, I'm picturing that like the the crazy uh, synth pipes uh, theme music oh, yes. is what Tomlin is playing. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, what is it? Tangerine Dream what is like the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the band that did it? Um, it definitely sounds like a strain of. Marijuana. Yeah, you're all it's having so a tangerine definitely. dream. So this is pretty far out, man. Whoa. And uh, you, you all have dreams. Uh, we'll call this a long rest, so everybody's going to get back all of the Hell long yeah. rest stuff. Um, but let's uh, let's let's share some of what uh, what these dreams are about. So um, I'm going to put some of this in your hands uh, because you're all going to have a relatively personal dream that you're going to share with everybody else here. Um, so I'm going to put that in the hands of each player to decide what personal kind of story dream their the uh, to their character uh, is shared Ooh. with the group. Ooh. And I may put a few uh, uh, and then add a few touches of my own. And uh, don't worry, Sam. I will uh, uh, get in there for uh, for Greg's since uh, obviously. Greg does not have a backstory that we wrote as a as a cameo. I was just imagining his dream was just like chasing a squirrel. <laughs> squirrel folk. Yep. Yes. You know I'll start off with I'll start off with um, with Greg. Uh, Greg's dreams are of this uh, this land to the south. Oh yeah. Um, Greg has these dreams of these um, uh, huge. Uh, arid, semi-arid uh, grasslands um, where there is uh, all this uh, uh, many these many little little tiny uh, towns, little little white plaster buildings uh, where people uh, are mostly engaged in herding, uh, and there are herd animals everywhere. But there are these high-built uh, uh, mission complexes, these these towers uh, that are all dedicated uh, to the gods of Ibisha, um, particular uh, to the the Church of Juno, and uh, it is here that there is uh, oppression on the part of the uh, extremely powerful uh, church-based government that. Uh, basically controls the military, which moves around uh, uh, the empire of Ibisha, uh, you know, taking what it needs from whatever the local uh, area it happens to be occupying at the time. Uh, and it is here that uh, Gregarian spent time uh, and uh, learned of the, the mighty hero known as El Gato. Um, <laughs> And so you see the dreams of uh, of uh, uh, El Gato, somewhat larger than life, because this is uh, in the somewhat hero worshipping Gregarian's mind. But uh, El Gato is a black cat, uh, a black tabaxi, um, with uh, huge yellow eyes and a huge wide brimmed uh, black hat and a black cape. Uh, uh, he wields a sword and a whip, and he is frequently will uh, uh, come out of the night to uh, raid the, the caravans of the tax collectors and the rich uh, and steal in order to, to give it to the poor. And uh, it is this, uh, that, uh, this life that Gregarian holds on a pedestal that Gregarian wants to bring to the north, that you can see this dream of Gregarian's 
where you have these bandits that are you know raiding and causing causing problems for the locals but you basically see uh the quaggles having you know their things being uh, uh taken from them or being driven out of the dumps um and uh you know this sort of thing and you see uh gregarian with a broad brimmed hat with a plume and a cape and his sword and and uh and mingosh uh come out of the woods to uh, uh to confront uh the t- guardsmen that would run off the quaggles or the bandits that would uh, uh cause harm to the quaggle colonies and basically uh take their ill-gotten goods and uh give it to the poor no gregarian awesome. hero of the north <laughs> He's a good boy. He's so good. He's a good boy. He wants to be a real good boy. That's the whole title. Gregarian, Hero of the North. A good He's boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> That's the t-shirt. Print it. Awesome. Yay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can go next if folks want. Yes. I think I got one in mind. Okay, so in Ugna's mind, you see her in the middle of an arena, and it's from her point of view as she's looking up at everyone's cheering. She's clearly just won a big victory. She's doing the wave, getting all the accolades, uh, and she hefts up her her battle hammer, puts it on her back, and strides in towards the darkness where the the gladiators uh, all gather after a match. And then things will change suddenly, and she'll suddenly be very, very small. So kind of like toddler Ugna, which is still probably the size of like (laughs) a a very large child. Um, uh, Still in the back of the gladiator, arena um but sort of where the the more barracksy parts are uh and she's toddling around at table height um with a little uh like dariole in her hand like one of the little sweets uh that were often left for the fighters um and there is someone sitting on a chair nearby singing a song it's this like sweet lullaby uh and she'll toddle over and crawl up into the lap of somebody who she vaguely remembers as being like warm and soft and safe uh and when she looks up she doesn't see the face but there's just a sense of peace like it's all kind of blurred out um, now i'm going to add to that as the as the mists swirl and pass that you're kind of all experiencing the mists pass over the face uh and you see the face uh of an orc woman with uh, a scar running down one side of the forehead, just past the eye. Um, very characteristic look. And there's some tattooing, basically, that's been around the scar to sort of make use of the, uh, uh, of the scar. Um, very characteristic, uh, recognizable look. Uh, and she has uh, um, black hair with a, a very uh, unique kind of bun. It's like a top knot that's been tied up into a high bun. Um, and she has the look of a warrior about her. It's not Ugna's size, uh, but, uh, but still imposing, uh, imposing um, uh, battle figure. Something you would definitely recognize if you saw again. Cool. Not a face that I remember. Now you do. Cool. I think um, Perny's dream is probably reminisces like reminiscings of, of travel. Um, with uh, uh, a, I'm going to imagine that he's known Barb for a long time now, not the way that she used to look, and he probably in his memories is is actually remembering her as she is now, not as she was then. Um, but uh, I'll, uh, Lane, Lane may take that and craft it with it. But um, I'm imagining he's imagining um, uh, adventures from the past. So um, climbing to like the top of really high airy to get a glimpse at this like rare type of uh, winged rock that um, uh, that they had heard about, and just uh, spending a day just watching it in wonder, or um, descending into like a deep, deep underground cavern. Uh, to just like pig out on these really rare glow worms that you can like totally trip trip balls on, um, or like going fishing and and uh, wanting to go see like uh, uh, the fish that leap from the sea and can can fly and glide and swim through the air for a bit before they go back down. 
um, and doing a lot of these, and also like occasional like uh, violent adventures with like, oh, I want to hunt this thing and drink its blood. That'd be fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but Perny does not. He has. Um, uh, I imagine that his equipment looks a little bit different in these adventures. He doesn't have a big book. Um, he's not carrying a big book. Uh, he's not carrying. He's carrying a bait, uh, the bait pail, but it probably looks a little bit different. And I imagine he's got a different kind of uh, fishing rod as well. Yeah, no, um, in the in the memories. So you say Barb as she looked later, you mean like she looks older as well? Well, I'm imagining her actually almost as like a shadowy, not even like human creature. Uh, okay. And he's, and he's remembering back and like whatever whatever his vision of her is now that she's dead, that's how he sees her in the memories mm -hmm. is what I'm imagining. But that's also a way of avoiding describing her because we haven't done too much of that. So we can also make a description of her in a dream that Glorpa had at one point. So that, that, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, but actually, I like this better. Uh, I like the idea that like so. So it's these like pleasant memories of Copernicus. He's not like doing a lot of like, you know, warlock magic. He's got a, mar a much more normal looking fishing rod. It's not made of bones. Um, and he doesn't have the, the book. Um, but as he's adventuring with this figure, which is like like a hollow shadow of a being with like what a suggestion of hair that's just kind of floating uh, and like just red hollows instead of where uh, eyes might be, just burning red fires. Um, and this entity is wearing a book on its back and is carrying the bone wand that is basically a fishing rod. Uh, so like they're fishing together, but yeah, it's like, you know, imagine a sweet little man Copernicus is like fishing uh, at a, like you know, a little pond side sitting on a log and then sitting next to him, also sitting in the log, also fishing is this like shadow entity with the glowing coals for eyes holding the, fishing rod made a bone as they're just like happily fishing there. It's like a montage from up. If the, if the wife in the montage from up was like a, a terrifying undead thing. Um, yeah. But so like all of the kind of like same, like weird warlock magic stuff. So it's like, they're not catching anything, but then like some green energy floats over the water and several fish float to the surface suddenly. And then like, mm -hmm get you know attached to their lines and get drawn in but it's that the source of all the creepy warlock green magic is coming from the the second entity instead of uh copernicus i think copernicus will steal a kiss every now and then oh yeah They're like <laughs> holding hands like there's like it's definitely a hundred percent montage from up you know oh what a, you know it's it's meant to be heartwarming it just also My, happens min minus the miscarriage horrible possibly or maybe yeah. maybe that's in there too I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to conceptualize what that looks like in this context. So let's yeah. not. Go there. I mean, we know Grandpa fucks. Yeah. Yep. It's like okay, so it's the miscarriage scene, but it's like uh, she's trying to raise a a, a mummy. Oh, and it doesn't. And quite. it doesn't work. It's like a a, 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 a yeah, a create undead. She's trying to create. I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of like some kind of crazy powerful. <laughs> you know, like um, what's the one that's just like a floating clawed hand? That's the whole undead, and it does like real crazy spectral shit. Anyway, trying to create some kind of advanced undead, and it fails. Mm -hmm. Trying to raise an undead beholder, and it just doesn't work. And she's sad. It didn't work. Copernicus comforts her. It's okay, we can try again. <laughs> we'll be more undead to raise. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 the taste out of my mouth. Um, uh, yeah, who wants to go next? Uh, I'll go. Uh, so in my dream, I am back in high school. And I just realized that I haven't done any of my homework that was due today. And I'm go not wearing... High. Yeah, and I'm not wearing pants. And it's really confusing because I've never went to high school and I've never done homework and I've never worn pants. So it's one of those weird like meta dreams where you're like, this is very stressful for me, but why is this stressful for me? Why am I dreaming this? And so, yeah, it's just, it's a very unsatisfying dream, not having a good time. Like, 
I think that as this dream goes on, the Mykonids are trying to like unharsh the mellow and it starts to turn into like like it's okay here's an endless pile of garbage to eat and it just turns into an eating dream yeah <laughs> but then it's like there's weird mushrooms in the garbage and i'm not sure if yeah. they're edible or not and yeah it's, it's a whole thing i mean everything's edible when you're fed <laughs> yeah but like that's the problem is like Technically, I can eat anything, but sometimes those things are alive, and they might fight back. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is um this is a result of uh, uh, Fedit's iron stomach fighting off yeah the spore high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that trying to no, trying to fight yeah. its way through, mm -hmm. and like no, no, mm -hmm. this is something weird's going on here. Is it yeah. not right? This is the closest I've ever been to vomiting. It's amazing. <laughs> um, this is a, sorry, you don't have a black token, but I was like, is this is where if if uh, Fedit had a black token, I'd like take it and have him wake up, and one of the hats is gone. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Why are you mean, Mister Hat? Like, no. Oh. I mean, I they guess I just have to wait uh, wait twelve hours for it to come out the other end, right? <laughs> but... Hope it doesn't pass without trace. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> How much fiber is in your typical hat? I wonder. Probably well, that top hat was it did belong to a shambling mound, so there's probably yeah. more than average. Yeah. Okay, Glorpa, take us home. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Well, Gorf is just remembering all of her various firsts. So her, it starts with um, her loss of virginity to Moss, and <laughs> just kind of her like Randy Moss feeling no, just Moss. around. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, it can be shaped like whatever you want, really. Uh, losing her virginity to a, a vining plant, which is where she learned a little bit about choking. Uh, losing her virginity to succulent, she learned to. Mixed pain with pleasure. Uh, the one time she accidentally involved a slug. And then it brings her to the memory with the guy that... I already forgot. You gave him a name, but the, the guy that she finally had a... Handsome Jack. Handsome Jack. Did, is he really handsome? Like, did you have a story planned for him? Uh, yeah, I mean... Eh, sure. Yeah, he's... he's <laughs> he, he told... He, so after the idea was that after you left, after he was gone and after you started leaving the woods and trying to figure out what you wanted to do, um, when you encountered people and sort of mentioned this guy or described him, people said, oh, is that is that handsome guy called Handsome Jack who passed through? Uh, so it was like a nickname. You can take that okay. however you want. It could be that it's oh, yeah, an it's ironic sarcastic. nickname. Who knows? It's Maybe he's not that sarcastic. attractive. So he's like an actual but, human um, man, not like a plant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like a humanoid he was person. Yeah, this is her first time. This is her her loss of virginity to a humanoid something, and this is what made her want to leave leave the because she has as many plants as she wants in the swamp. This is no big like her uh, cavorting with plants is kind of masturbatory. It's just like she's touching herself. It's a good time, but she doesn't have like an intellectual connection with them. So you know, it's uh that's what's exciting for. Her. This is why the shambling mound wasn't so exciting yeah. you know he wasn't like, boyfriend material all right mm -hmm. no not so much it was good for a one night but uh yeah this guy she's just kind of memory having little memories of uh connecting with this guy and remembering having this like one-on-one -on -one conversation and then the morning when you know just happened to be uh her things were taken right they're just gone somehow uh and she did she wake up at some point are we all like waking up at some point from this weird really? thing like, we'll get there, but right she's, now it's either just way. The she's dreams. thinking about she's thinking about the locket that she has around her neck, and uh, she's thinking about opening it and looking at the toenail that she stole from him, and yeah. how how much that meant to her. And kisses it in her dream, licks it a little oh, bit, toenail? and closes Ooh. it back up. Uh -huh. <laughs> kind of a half moon, a half moon, <laughs> not even like a crescent, but like yeah. a good shot. I want to go now. I don't want you to discuss my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Please cleanse the palate that is yeah. all of us right yep. now. Get that toenail taste out yep. of our mouth. Let's, let's get a let's get a <laughs> let's get a tromlin let's get a tromlin palate cleanser. Uh, right, give me um call heads or tails. I'm gonna decide is a good dream or a bad dream. Ooh. Oh no. Right. 
Are you going to roll it? <laughs> I'm going to flip it. You go. You call heads or tails. Let's let's call it heads. All right. Let's see. We had we had Glorpa, so we already had tails. No. All right. <laughs> oh. There is some head in there. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, my dream starts off um, just like it starts off as a memory. Young satyr working in the brothel, um, you know, the madam who helped raise me on the streets, you know, made sure I had a place to be at, um, me just doing menial tasks around the place, but also going and loosening uh, pockets of stingy Johns for her. Um, and it then, uh, I think how this would go, like turning a corner and suddenly realizing you're not a child anymore, oh. and you're in the street still, but it's like the street I'm used to, it is completely empty. Like there's just no one there. The town is vacant and, uh, can't find Ugna, I can't find uh, any of my contacts. And uh, it's just one of those moments, like, feel like I'm supposed to be finding someone and can't. I rolled uh, Tails, so. I might um, sidle up and just, like, give Tromlin, like, a grandpa side hug as we're laying here. Yeah, I'm basically having a bad dream about being abandoned. Yeah, I grandpa, Grandpa's gonna, like, stroke his hair and, like, just give him a hug. And be like, you you found you found someone who cares about where you oh. are and cares that you're doing well. Let's make that a start. Oh. And my grandmother is a head in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say it was a head. <laughs> was my grandmother's so vagina is in a bucket. Yeah. Look, your family's come in all shapes <laughs> and sizes. <laughs> Randy, you're the one that just put teeth in it, okay? That wasn't anybody else's doing. Hey, she's eating stuff. There's, there should be teeth. Oh. She could be gumming it. You don't know. Hey, I like to think my grandmother can at least get a good set of dentures for her vagina. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sentences kind of that I hope have that. never been said before. <laughs> so, uh, so throughout the night, these dreams circulate through all of you. Um, but as any is, is any if any of these dreams try threaten to get to like really bad trips, there will be like attention from uh, the fungoids, the the myconids, to try and uh, and soothe and uh, and return that to a to a happier place. Um, there is definitely a a soothing party atmosphere. It's all very mellow, um, and it's it's all very. Um, uh, uh, you know, it, it very. It's intended to be restorative, um, and so even though these bad dreams can surface here and there, there will be like a a, a return to normalcy, um, uh, and then and of course everybody can sort of like get off to their part of this party and have the kind of party experience that they want to. So uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Glorpa. Uh, has the uh, adventures that, uh, that that Glorpa uh, wishes to have. Fade to black. It involves her thumb. Fade to black. It's a, it's a, it's a green <laughs> thumb. Uh, and, you know, and Tromlin, uh, you know, gets thoroughly, thoroughly trashed. Um, and it's going to have some nice lingering hangover uh, uh, symptoms uh, the following day. Um, and you've all kind of learned a little bit about everybody else's, um, so I think I might throw Ooh. just a, a couple little more bits of, uh, cause yeah, you all experienced these dreams. Oh, cool. Oh, that's mm -hmm. nice. You so guys I just will... went through so much with me. Oh God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will, Poor Greg. I will add a little, a little, uh, Greg, no. a little twist to a couple of these though. Just, I want to add, um, to Tromlin's, you'll get some of the bits of conversation in those early days uh, in the in the brothel, um, and you'll definitely catch uh, the name of uh, uh, the madam, Madame Fantasia de Narnia. Um, oh, you're muted. Oh, sorry, I thought um, you were I, 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 I still know her. She's one of my contacts. So yep. I, she, I, I view her as the closest thing to a mom I have. 
Aww. And the others get that impression, basically, is what I'm going for. Yeah, like, I'm very defensive um, of her. Cool. Uh, and I will say, I'll add to Fetid, just between some of the the the, the, uh, the fighting of the, the iron stomach here, getting into, mm-hmm. like, the... I'm giving a, a, a public uh, speech, and uh, I don't know why, <laughs> but I am doing it, and it's really, really stressful. Um, but also mixed in there are glimpses of encounters that Fetid has had with the town guard of Mud Hollow and with like assholes. Like seeing uh friends or family that have been like that have gone missing because they were forced out or, or or who knows what happened to them when the when mm-hmm. the town guard came after did a did a clean out uh because they routinely do a clean out of the dump at Mud mm-hmm. Hollow where they're trying to sort of in the same way that you might see, uh, not to make D and D too real, but in the same way that you might see the police come and like clean out a homeless camp, mm-hmm. um, and suddenly certain people that people knew, uh, I haven't seen them in a long time. What happened to them? Um, except in this case, it's Quaggles, yep. uh, in in a fantasy world, a city dump, um, and uh, I'm one last element here uh, for Greg. In all these dreams and all these bits that you're seeing about all these, these new friends, I mean, friends, I don't know, there's some questionable shit going on in all this, but <laughs> um, but you uh, interestingly saw someone you recognize in one of these dreams. Um, the kind of, I'm going to describe him, um, uh, Danielle, I'm going to describe Handsome Jack as being handsome, but in a Disney villain way where he's got like a strong jawline and dark hair and the, the flashing winning smile. But then when he does a bad thing and he turns, the face does an animation scrunch that makes him kind of not very attractive looking and gross. Okay. So he's, he's handsome when he wants to be. Mm. Um, nice trait. But that guy, uh, Greg, you recognize because he came through uh, Stormhill uh, and bartered with the Quaggles like a month ago, like not even a month ago, like not very long ago. Recently. Hmm. And he basically came and he he um, dealt with the uh, um, with uh, Penny Whistle, the old uh, uh, junk trader in the market. And he came to the Quaggles, and he basically traded a whole bunch of uh, random junk uh, mm. to get some cash because he was moving on to Raven Hill or Ravenfall. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he bought himself a passage with a with a caravan to head out to Ravenfall. So yeah, you're like, oh, that guy. That guy. Um. And so that's the only other uh, element of, of interest that came out of the dreams is that you were like, oh, I know that guy. That's that, that I know that guy that I now know way too much about because I just saw <laughs> dreams of him getting it on with Glorpa and she stole his toenail apparently. Uh, and she keeps it, it in gross. a locket and she licked it. It's the only part of him that's not handsome, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Good times. Well, it is to Glorpa, but... Um, and um, with that, you've had your long Greg rest, and you're all with the group. Yeah, oh, you're all. Um, uh, you know, I got that... for the day is number thirteen. Whoever saw that list. Oh, number thirteen, excellent. Yes. As you awaken, feeling extremely hungover, and so the immediate order of business is going to be pick which god to like pray to about this. <laughs> right, that's the that's kind of the standard thing. Oh, dear. I really need to sort this now that I have. I'm going to feed my cats really quickly before they scream at me. Oh, no. Screaming cats. It's screaming cats. Where Hello. is trauma? <laughs> God list. I think. Yeah, there it is. Got it. Number 13, Timora. <laughs> Good. It is Lady time Luck. to worship Lady Luck. Perfect. So, yeah, you're, uh, the symbol, of course, is a silver coin with a shamrock on it. All right. I pull that appropriate holy symbol out. 
I um, offer her my prayers as best I can focus. Um, I will drop a copper uh, face side up to symbolize some luck to her. So a penny. There you go. Oh, I apologize. I completely missed the uh, the final dream that was supposed to be part of that sequence. So I'm just going to backtrack because oh. obviously we haven't done anything yet the next morning. But just quickly back up. Uh, I gave all of your guys as ones, but I didn't do the mic in it. So in addition to all of these dreams and hallucinations that you all get to share, uh, pull out of each other, you also see this um, this uh, larger story that's happening uh, behind the scenes. And in particular, effectively what you're seeing is um, probably means more to Copernicus than anyone else. Um, but there is this eternal kind of struggle uh, among the Fae. And for most of you, this will sort of manifest in, the, in a sensation of the... The, the things in the night, and especially in the cold and dark of a long winter, right? The, the, you'll see uh, the ravens uh, flying overhead and uh, things moving in the snow and ice, creatures of angles and white uh, and sharp points, um, spikes and claws. Um, but also the shadows in the dark um, with their red eyes uh, as they come and they go. And then on the other side of this, um, you see uh, uh, in, the, in the spring and the summer, so that's like in the fall and the winter, uh, you know, the, the cold of the winds and the creepiness of the, of the long nights. And then in the spring and the summer, you see the, the, uh, the, spring the rebirth the the growth uh of new things and you see the myconids uh you know growing in the in the hollows and the shadows of the trees but you also see uh you know the warmth of the sprites and the and the glowing things flitting around you see the grassy mossy backs of of hunched trolls um moving around uh in the in the the in the wetlands and the and the the, the bogs and and marshes between the trees between, among the hills and you get a, a a sense of this ongoing uh ongoing struggle uh copernicus in particular um this rings a lot of bells with what you had kind of um figured out from your 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 research and history roles in previous games you'd sort of um uh, made some equations about what's th this idea that there is eternal struggle between the arch fae, right? The, the most powerful of the fae creatures embody uh, these aspects uh, of the seasons and of the uh, of nature and so on. Um, and of course, there is always a struggle between them. That's kind of what the seasons are. And you know uh, that very much the Raven Queen is a an arch fay of the winter and the autumn and the dark and the night. Um, but there are other uh, arch fay out there. There are other fay out there that are more, uh, that these guys would be more uh, akin to, um, that are fay creatures of the, of the, the spring and growth and uh, rebirth and, and so forth. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think I'll leave it there. I was gonna, I was thinking about one more thing to throw in there, but I think I'll leave it there. I think that's that's a, a sufficient bunch of interesting stuff going on. So then, the end of the night, you awaken, you start coming around. Uh, Tromlin groans and immediately pulls out his uh, his keychain of uh, of many uh, holy symbols. And, I'm not even sure what it looks like when Tromlin does this. If he like closes his eyes and like flips the the, the holy symbols until he falls on one or whatever, but I kind of have to in my cart back in uh, town or at home. I have like a little roulette wheel, 
but I don't have that here, so I have to basically just like shake the ring around, grab one. Oh, worship you today. <laughs> Doing the uh, the the rights to tomorrow. I got a, a quick fan art incoming. Excellent. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, so cute. Hangovers. Sorry. Just, uh, uh, I'm all delayed. I want to see it. Is that? <laughs> I think that's the uh, satyr from the old Hercules cartoon. Old, old toot toot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Another one of Lars. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. there it is too. I think you can just see the the signature. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Oh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> Trippin' Tromlin. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, 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 the mushrooms from Fantasia, too. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so you're all beginning to sort of, like, come down and wake up. Whoa. Um, and, well, um... I had a good night. How about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed the company. Uh, I'm looking around for the mushroom people. Are they here? Greg's just like shaking his head. He's just like, <laughs> very, he's very upset by everything that just happened. Oh. So goes to pet his head, but then decides probably not what you want. Actually, look at Greg. Would would a belly rub make you feel better? Yes. I rub. Just... I rub Greg's tummy. Yeah. Oh. That's much. Better. Sign of the Mykonids. Yeah. They have disappeared oh. into the night. Unless those guys are gone. Uh, um, where's where's the bucket with my grandmother in it? Is it still? Uh, you oh, don't yeah. you don't see it. It's not tied to Copernicus's belt anymore. At this moment, Copernicus, I think, will like actually look like uh, he generally kind of keeps it, keeps it together. Like he stays very even keeled through a lot of things, but he actually probably looks like he's an outright panic. All blood is drained from his face. Granddad, I'll help He's you like... find. I'll, I'll help you find her. I'll help you find her. Um, a short distance away, when you quickly start looking around, you will see a stump at the edge, like a rotting stump at the edge of the clearing. Uh, has the knife, uh, the the black sacrificial dagger, is lying in the middle of it. Um, there is some kind of ritual there because there are tiny uh, mushrooms growing on the stump in a circle all around uh, the uh, the black knife. Well, I am gonna cast. Um... Oh, maybe I um, can I do an Arcana check to see if I understand what ritual happened? Yep, sure can. <laughs> Oh, I can detect magic at will. Hey, I forgot about that. I'm gonna do some detecting magic and see if I can get a vibe off the bucket somewhere, um, and see if there's anything going on on top of the uh, the knife around. That would be a 17 arcana check. Um, you suspect that uh, this is like um. <laughs> Almost like a removal, a removing curse kind of thing, like trying to undo the magic of the knife. Okay, I will tell uh, Granddad. Trying to uh, stop this, get rid of this evil magic. It looks like our hosts were trying to undo the evil that was cast on this blade. I'm going to uh, detect magic and see if they succeeded. Uh, the knife is still magical. I'm gonna. How does do, do I? Can I keep refining the det detect magic to find out more about like? Do they just switch really. out the magic or something different? No, you need you need an identify ritual to get more information. Detect magic just gives you a yes no basically. Okay. A and yes no I, and where? Can I detect the bucket around anywhere? Uh, you're not seeing it. Oh. All right. Grandpa's probably too impatient to find out, to, to cast a full identify for 10 minutes, so I think he's just gonna straight up cut himself and try and uh, like, hit a bush with a um, some blood magic chill touch. Does it does it work if I try and like, grapple a bush with like, an agonizing uh, chill touch? 
Like, what, what are you trying to do? Just like I'm trying to see if damage. I can cast blood magic the normal way that I would, and I'm just the target oh. is a bush. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it okay. works. Okay. Okay. So that's um, good. Blood magic works. Can I do an investigation to see if I can find my grandmother? Sacrifice five HP uh, to positivity there. Yeah, you can start. Uh, you can do an investigation to start gathering clues and try and figure out what happened. Yeah. Can 14. we aid him? Because I'm sure by now we've uh, all noticed that Copernicus is like losing it uh, and are yeah. scrabbling to help. <clears throat> yeah, you can yeah. other, we can have other investigation roles, or you can aid one another. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna if Ukna roll. is helping Promlin, uh, go ahead and roll uh, advantage on that roll. Okay, then um, so reroll. So fourteen will be a high roll. Um, it's still the best roll of two. I, I rolled a dirty twenty in investigation, but I kind of feel like Perny might have disadvantage because, like, I don't think he's thinking straight. Like, he's lost. Yes, it. yes, for sure. Rolling again, uh, so thir dirty thirteen on the second roll. Yeah, not finding a lot of clues. Anybody else? Uh. Maybe uh, maybe fill in because uh, Greg isn't gonna have a, a clear idea as to what the hell's going on. No, I don't really know what I'm looking for here. <laughs> Did you say this maybe. is an investigation or perception? Yeah. Investigation. Ugna says really loudly oh, okay. at one Just point, "Is like, are, is it your bucket? Is the bucket oh, gone?" It's yes, it's the ah. bucket. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking that's, for a bucket. That's a problem, right? Yes, I can, I can do an investigate problem. looking for a bucket. I got a 23 on investigation. Let's see, uh, uh, let's see what we get from, uh, from, Greg. from Greg as well. I think we're uh, going to have CSI quaggles again. Mm -hmm. um, 26. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the quaggles put their heads together. Fed is like, it's this bucket. It's full of, like... Really, really. Don't look inside it. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you do. Egyptian Dilbert. Um, uh, and yeah, you guys begin to look for clues. Uh, you um, quickly find, especially uh, with Gregarian's nose, um, that the, the scent of the Myconids, um went off uh, in a southerly direction. Um, and uh, there's no sign of the bucket anywhere here it it must have been taken with the with these creatures oh, no. um, why would they take your bucket what's it's just a bucket right maybe they mistook it for the wine no or, or fertilizer so. i mean it eats a lot of wine yeah. gone too. The man that wine was gone. wasted on everybody Everybody was wasted, wasted on, wine. on the wine. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it prevented a fight with Fey Folk. It was I mean, not a waste. Good. Oh no, it started a fight with Fey Folk. <laughs> <laughs> it started a fight goddamn war. Oh, no. <laughs> I, um, yeah, like, it. Grandpa's gonna sidetrack this mission. I don't, I don't know. No, how, no, for like, sure. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, I think we all know that's non-negotiable. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do. I'm trying to. I feel like I had some kind of spell that let me like ask demons questions about things. Contact higher plane or something. Yes. Or? Fuck it. You have a. Uh, you have a ritual. A ritual, right? Uh, that you plane. can contact other plane and ask terrible, terrible entities to give you information. Yeah, so Grandpa's instinct is to go, like, just escalate this right to the top of demon customer service and be like, tell me <laughs> tell me where it is and how I get it, and I'm going now. But Grandpa's there's probably, like, Karen. a less... It might make more sense to just track the Myconids and try and get it back. So feel free to... Anything Grandpa's doing that seems counterproductive, feel free to interrupt him and redirect him here. I mean, this is a ritual anyway, so this is, like, yeah. a 10 minutes ten of minutes, Grandpa, yeah. like, looking, pouring over his book. Yeah. So in the meantime, we can have some RP time because certainly you all have just had some crazy intimate dreams about one another. Like, and I'm yeah, curious if there's just others. like a no, just like not us, like no one will look Gorp in the eye or. For the first time in my entire life, I feel the need for a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Ugna settles up at one point and just kind of like looks sideways at Glorp and is like, so, um, 
vines, huh? <laughs> you gotta try it. Just trust me. That was wild. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I brought some positivity to the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, actually honestly, Trauman might be the only person not judging you. He's like, do what you gotta do. Yep. <laughs> Greg just doesn't understand anything he saw. He's just like shaking his head. <laughs> I mean, again, I'll remind you that you do you do know uh, you did recognize that. Oh, guy. that's right. That whole thing. When I'm done being traumatized, <laughs> yeah. uh, you. I mean, I assume like you might want to ask me because you saw my dream. So, so oh, you, did your what, dream have? Uh... I, 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 I had handsome Jack in my dream. Or no, or, no, I didn't. I just oh. recognized him. You just oh, recognized just, him. Right, yeah. Your dream was about right. Elgato. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, then, yeah, I tell you uh, what I'm, like, in between, you know, just, like, just clutching my head and, and, and trying not to think about it. But I recognized that, that, that mostly unclothed man from your dream. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, you saw me, I clothes on Oh, when I, when like, I the boots him. on. The boots yeah, stayed yeah. on. Uh, I, when I saw say. him, when I saw him, he had clothes on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I so I, I guess like I explained the context in which I saw him. Like, he but, was just wow. a town. How how recently? Yeah, how recently a was that? Did you, did yeah, like, you say it, a month ago? Less, yeah, less than a month ago. <laughs> Um, which would oh. put it basically right after he, or shortly after he left. Yeah, so what does yeah. that mean? Okay. And he went to Ravenfall. Well, that's... Yeah. He didn't have a, uh, Greg, he didn't have a, oh, I don't know, a partner or anything with him, did he? Uh, no, did he, right? He didn't. Good. He did not. All right. <laughs> that's that's uh. all I'm really interested in. I don't, I don't care what he was trading. It's. <laughs> it's not terribly interesting to me. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Does that come out at all? I don't know. Just curious whether that comes out to anybody else, because it might be of interest to someone else here. Oh. I mean, I don't know Which who else This is the part that he was uh, uh, trading all the junk. Selling all your stuff. Mm. To Quaggles. Yeah, the gold pieces, Do I hear this? the gems. Yeah, that's what I'm that wondering. Broken. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm halfway paying attention, I'm like, wait, this dude took Glorpa's stuff and hawked it? Wonderful. Yeah. No. Glorpa, he just, used yeah. you. No, it probably just rolled into his pockets. That's the only thing that makes sense. <laughs> you don't You don't go to a no, pawn that... shop. <laughs> Does Glorpa have anything on her person? That I can see. Got uh, just that locket. Barely enough clothing. <laughs> just that locket. <laughs> All right, I'm going to. Orpha's always to... worn a locket, and otherwise, basically, has no equipment. Mm -hmm. I just have to do a sleight of hand That's and it. take the locket off of her. Show her. You could. It doesn't even take that much. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, it, like, like sliding up to Glorpa and and uh, and getting somewhere where your hands are nearby is not gonna is not gonna be taken badly. Uh, Twenty four. <laughs> Yeah. You didn't yeah. need to. You keep wasting this shit. <laughs> yeah, but it's not even a 20. I basically walk up to her and say, Glorpa, it's, some people are just bad people and they steal things to benefit. I'll never believe that some people are bad people. I've just started meeting them and they're all great, just like you guys. Glorpa, oh. where's your locket? Uh, probably fell in a pocket. <laughs> I didn't mean for I, that I hold up my hand, locket hanging from it. Oh, trick! Uh, see, you're good. You did a little trick. Yes, and usually this trick is I'm taking things from people to sell oh, them for my own benefit. I hand it back. To I you. want you to benefit. That sounds great. Oh my god! Oh, you <laughs> sweet what? Oh, sweet summer child. I have it? Oh. Yeah, I give it back. I give it back immediately. Like, Ugna, I'm not. You're gonna give trauma a look like if we see them, we're fucking them up, right? Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like a, like, uh, you want me to, you're like... I look at you. <laughs> More tricks? <laughs> while, this is, while this is happening, 
I don't know if how many of you guys have seen like Infinity War, but there's a scene where uh, where Doctor Strange is in the background, like floating and doing crazy yeah. rituals mm-hmm. while everyone else is going. What is that supposed to be happening? <laughs> That's basically going on, except instead of like uh, Marvel Disney magic, it's like like dark, whispered, terrible mm-hmm. words and and uh, and shadows. Um, you should do some tricks for your, your grandpa. He probably needs a little bit of a pick me up. Oh. Go steal something off of him. Do I like, oh, trauma is seriously torn because he doesn't actually want to take this innocence from Glorpa. Yeah. But we'll look uh, at out the same time, out. we're looking out for you. <laughs> Someone has taken advantage of Glorpa. Yeah. And he wants to unhandsome the handsomeness. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> so uh, I would like. Uh, Copernicus to make a saving throw. Uh oh. You know this saving It's an oh, intelligent no. saving throw. I'm picturing that scene from Letterkenny when, like, the entire town of Letterkenny rolls up to beat on this one dude. <laughs> when we find Handsome Jack, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> one guy cheats on the main yep. character. Yep. And the entire town drives up to go lay down a beat. <laughs> um, I got a 16. Got? Uh, the target is 15. Hey. You have succeeded. You yeah. do not take. Uh, you do not take 6d6 psychic damage. Oh God! And you are not insane until you oh, finish your next long rest. Yeah. Oh, okay. I would never. Yeah, everyone's there. encountered more this than before. usual. You uh, get to ask uh, a terrible, terrible entity. That you have contacted uh, uh, five questions. Now, is this one that I've contacted before that would know me, or am I talking to a rando here? Um, so this is Demon Greg. <laughs> I'm not the same Greg as that other Greg. <laughs> it's it's sort of uh, written that it doesn't matter, so it's kind of we can flavor it as you like. Okay. Um, this I'm could ma- be your own patron. This could be. Like it's 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 written like that it's just some random Cthuloid thing from beyond like space and time, um, but you you just get some information out of it. You're just like, what I'm, are the lottery I'm, numbers? And then you, I, you know. I'm imagining that um, uh, he's asking someone who would know um, Barb, uh, who would like have an encounter with Barb in particular. I would. To him about personal. I would be quite happy. Uh, if you were to be uh, contacting uh, good old uh, Shukekza. Okay, let's do it. So first question is just, where is she? Let me double check. Uh, No, they have to be one-word answers. No, no, I can, sorry, if a one-word answer would be misleading, the GM might offer a short phrase as an answer. Yeah, it doesn't say they have to be yes/no questions. Um, uh, yeah, it's gonna have to be something a little vague because there's no specific location that it could give you that would be useful to you. So it's it's gonna say, um, uh, to the south. What do they want moving, with her? Moving quickly. Oh, that's not good. Sorry, your next question was? What do they want with her? Um, just a quick check here. Yeah, so I'm going to double check here if anyone potentially speaks the language that you're say, asking these questions in, but I think the answer is definitely no. Is it infernal? Uh, in this it's case, abyssal. it's it's abyssal. abyssal. Yeah, nope. No. Sorry. Okay. So nobody. So so uh, all that you see, you were talking about Copernicus as he's like floating above the ground with like like dark shadows basically spinning around him and like <laughs> horrible noises from somewhere beyond the veil are are echoing. Uh, as he begins to ask questions in an awful, terrible language that none of you understand. Um, 
Uh, and so the second question was, what do they want with her or something like that? Yeah. Um, they seek uh, they seek to undo the spell. How much time do I have? Till midnight. Is there any way to solve this without violence? Bend the shade. What was it? Send the shade. Send the shade. Okay. And the last question. What would they want from me? They think they are helping. Mm. See, everybody's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this point, at, oh. at this point, the black dagger uh, that uh, Copernicus always carries, and he's got hold, and he's got in his lap right now while he's casting this ritual, um, um, rises on its own in the air up out of the dagger, or out of the out of his lap, uh, and turns and plunges into his chest. What? 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 And the Whoa. voice. The voice will continue. Uh, Copernicus, and say, um, uh, uh, my hold shall not be undone. Give. And as it, it says that as the, knife, the dagger plunges into your chest. Um, and so you're going to start taking a lot of damage. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already down five because I tested it out on myself. Yeah. Do we, do we see this? Yes, yes, you do. Because it would just be like, whoa, whoa, uh, yikes! <laughs> and, like, run over to try and stop the dagger? Yeah, I can. The dagger's can we... there. You can start trying to do something about this. I'm going to try and pull it out of him. I Ugna start. has assumed that he um, somehow fell on it while in the air. Uh, yeah. And needs to it, it, pull it out. It fell horizontally, but in reverse, so that it fell towards him. Yeah, yeah. You know, that happens sometimes. does that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's 40 damage. 40 damage. All right. Yep. So that's 45 total, which leaves me at 7. Correct. <laughs> um, I will immediately cast Cure Moderate Wounds on my uncle, yeah. my grandfather. I figured something like that might happen. 17. Um, so... So, uh, 17 total da uh, uh, damage? Yeah. Or healing? You know yeah. what I mean? The opposite of damage. You uh, so 17 Ugna, back. Ugna, you were lunging for it to grab the dagger and pull it out? Yep. You do so? Oh, I was going to say, this probably won't go well uh, for me, but... Uh... Well, it won't. The knife, <laughs> but it's just a knife. You yeah. grab the knife and pull it out of his chest. But also, uh, in the process, you take 15 necrotic damage. Cool. Um, and and it will continue ow, ow, to burn burning your knife, hand. Burning knife, burning knife, as I'm holding um, it. Take, and, like, uh, fighting with it. I take my blanket out of my pack and, like, basically try to help her wrap the knife in the blanket so she's not holding it directly. So, Copernicus, you get 17 hit points back immediately from the healing. Uh, the spell ends, and you sort of, like, fall the, like, six inches back down onto the ground because um, you were floating. Um... And uh, the ritual's over, but I will point out that people are trying to take your knife from you again. Oh, I'm going to give it back to him. Am I aware Am I aware that I was stabbed in the chest? I mean, it's kind of hard to miss. Okay. But like, I don't think that, like, Ugna stabbed me because Ugna is, like, oh. stashing my knife and I've got this you giant... You know exactly who stabbed you. You know yeah. exactly who stabbed you. I imagine, this, like, it's still trying to this... move and I'm, like, fighting with the knife to, like, hold it in space. Not really. Oh, okay. Not really. Oh, having cool. having done that, it's kind of cool. it's kind of satisfied. So, yeah. Can I, can I you, you do a little yeah. bit. You do a little bit. What's that? Can I, can I Arcana so that Peter, who's a little bit confused, can get Perny's take on like what just happened? Because I feel like Perny. Or, made, actually, or is Perny. Yeah. Confused? Roll. Arcana's good. Yeah. Perny vaguely has a sense of deja vu. Oh okay. Oh. Is this how I? Is this my origin story replaying itself? <laughs> uh, it's a nineteen. <laughs> Uh, and I can't remember if I have advantage on because of some scholar stuff or not. 
say roll with advantage anyway on this particular roll. Uh, Nineteen still the better of the two. Yeah, this is this is still a, this is a very. Um, yeah, you, your Arcana, based on what Tromlin said about the the mushroom ritual circle around the mm -hmm. dagger, trying to undo the magic. Um, this is a uh, this is. This is reminiscent of things you kind of vaguely remember in dreams sometimes. Uh, yeah, you think this was like a, a, a renewal of the contract, if uh, you put it that okay. way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the bond got softened a little bit, and uh, Sugar Daddy some Warlock... Serious, yeah, some serious blood blood magic was needed yeah. to, okay. to, uh, to undo these, these, in, these meddling fungus... He would have got away for it, uh, away with it, if it weren't for those mm, it's meddling, meddling fungus. Fungi. Anyway, you meddling Mike and kids. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, well, uh, the war path is south. They've gone south. They're moving quickly. I have until yep. midnight to get the bucket back or some. I will still happen. point out that you still don't have your knife back, and also Ugna take another ten necrotic damage. Uh -oh. So the the, the oh. blink that I wrapped it in didn't help. Cool. Oh, that was that's that's in, it, it does it takes time to like yep. wrap the blade, yep. and Ugna I, was not releasing it. No, so. I'm, I'm going to take this from you now, and I promise you that it's safe. Oh, watch out! It's okay. real hot. It's Aww. it's real real hot. And I obviously have oh, to ow. use another spell on Ugna because I can't have her be down that much. Does it mean that we're going to have to go fight those cute little guys? Because they're real good. I like them. Eighteen. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a roll on um, uh, an Arcana check uh, from Kearney about what the heck he meant by send the shade. Yeah. Uh, with advantage or no? Uh, oh, but I, you can drop an a inspiration on it if you want. That's okay. I'll, I'll leave it as was. Uh, 19. Uh, yeah, 19 is good enough anyway. Um, uh, I would suggest that you check your uh, oh check your check your list. That's okay, my, that's my hint. What's the gaze? Far strike. Not that list. Da, 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 da. Checking my spell list. I am going to send you a message. Oh, my demon list. <laughs> the best list. I like, I like that you have right? a demon list. That's not <laughs> worrying. I, it's very good, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, just checking this out. Oh, yes. Yep. Perfect. All right. Um... The only how, uh, how long can I control it though? Because I feel like that's gonna. I feel like this is a kind of. It's gonna be a long journey, and I don't know if I can maintain control that long. Uh, well, it depends on like the the nature of exactly what you're uh, sending it to do. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Uh, up to an hour. So depending on what you're send, sending it to do. Doesn't it get um, a save every round, though? Yes, in combat time, but I would hand wave that to a certain extent. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I think let's 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 call Naz. <laughs> we'll send Naz. <laughs> It has been zero games since we last summoned a demon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is kind of Perny's thing, right? <laughs> so Copernicus has recovered his knife. Uh, did you roll for the hit points you gave back to Ugna? Yeah, I got back uh, all but seven. Cool. Uh, so Copernicus, uh, having gotten back his knife... Uh, begins to uh, wave it around the air and chant horrible words again. 
Uh, I don't know if anybody has any particular, uh, you know. This is just a thing he does sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I've stopped yeah, trying to make I've it make sense. To, like, I've learned to just sort of get behind Ugna and yeah. stay there. You might want to tell your new Quaggle friend that that's a thing yeah. that should be done. It's Ooh, like, yeah. Uh, I imagine it like going on. it like gets into your ears like a like an incessant whine, and you're just like, eh, I gotta scratch at them. Uh, <laughs> this may seem super bad and evil, um, but we're pretty sure it's not completely bad and evil what he's doing. So mostly, it's necessary don't, bad and evil. Don't don't worry about mm. it. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. Don't worry <laughs> about it. It's probably fine. I, I look at Brad. Look. Everyone's grandparents have weird things they do. This is mine. Yeah. At that point, a... He's not uh, the only weird. At least he's not, like, spreading conspiracy theories on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is relatively harmless. Yeah. Ten Compared foot to tall, uh, A ten-foot-tall, basically, silhouette of a humanoid figure um, that's, like, not, like, really there. It's two-dimensional. It's a shadow, but it's there. Um, basically holding... Uh, what looks like um, a bladed weapon in each hand, but it's all just silhouette. So that's just the shape. Um, no okay. face, just a shape of a, a silhouetted head. Uh, and like the lower half of it is the silhouette is billowing as though it were like the silhouette of a cloak. Um, uh, rises up out of the earth uh, with like a whispered hiss. Uh, and... Uh, uh, what do you uh, tell it to do, Copernicus? There is a party of Myconids heading south quickly with a bucket. Go find out where they are. If you can, retrieve the bucket. And if you can't, murder anyone who gets in your way. Okay. <laughs> nope. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. You bring that's back your the bucket. If you bring back the bucket, I promise I will okay. not call you for the next year. Oh, oh, this is a good, this is a good twist. Uh, I would like uh, you to roll me. Okay, so first question is, do you mean it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, in that case, persuasion, not deception. Okay. <laughs> 24. All right. Pretty good. Um. Oh yeah, he is. Uh, uh, there's no face, but the 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 posture of this terrifying thing uh, is like uh, a, a a dog being offered walkies. It, it does like a <laughs> it straightens up quite uh, rapidly, and then with like a, a a sound like a rush of wind, just off like at a frightening pace into the trees. I just imagine that Hanna Barbera cartoon sound of the feet running. Mm -hmm. the <laughs> yeah. But if you could somehow make that terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it makes that noise and then it goes but in a scary way. Into the trees. Yeah. Okay, right. well that's happening. Um do I, what are my you, you said bring me the bucket, right? So it's yeah. gonna bring it to you. So yeah. So okay. you can do whatever you want now. Oh, as long as you keep oh, concentrating on the spell. Yeah. We've got one hour. Grandpa wants to... Grandpa would like to... So I, I would like to um, travel south and see if we can keep up closely and to give um, my friend there the greatest chance of success of uh, getting back to us in time. Um, he uh, only has an hour. That guy uh, was on failed. our side, right? He is on our side. <laughs> Very much so. Okay. I would Ooh. appreciate your help with this matter. Very much. Uh, do you want to ride on my back? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Greg, this direction that they're talking about is in fact the same direction you were going to lead them towards oh. the camp. So. Oh, well, that's convenient. At least for now. I let them know that that is the case. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I think yeah, I need to say that pop if, you up on if my we back. run into bandits, I'm going to uh, slip off and continue after the mic in its. Gotcha. And away we go. Yeah. So you, um, you start your trot. way south. I'm going to roll... Double-timing um, this. I'm going to roll some saving throws here. 
but I feel like the um, um, that was a, the persuasion roll was good, and the offer is good. Yeah, it's a solid offer. Um, um, and did you call him by name? Oh, you must have, because you have to yeah. call the name in order to summon him. Yeah. Um, so you can let the others know what name they heard for this thing, if anyone's uh, keeping track. Na Nazrazel. Great. Call me Lil Naz. <laughs> Sounds like a nice guy. Yeah. Sounds like a good dude. Mm -hmm. Lil, Lil Naz. Lil Naz. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, after, you know, maybe uh, 45 minutes of travel, um, you get to the point... Uh, Greg, where you go, where you're like, okay, the scent of the Myconids is going that way, but if we want to go to the bandit camp, we got to go that way. So a decision has to be made now. Right. My it's going to have to be way. to the Myconids. It's like, the bucket. My grandfather. Yeah, we're not in a rush, right? Yeah. yeah. You kind of are, yeah. but my uh, grandfather is not. The bandits. My grandfather's oh, yeah. not going to like up on this. Kind of in a yeah. rush, like. Mm. See, that's we, yeah. Uh, I would sort of describe it. I mean, like we're trying to stop like the people from being murdered, and that's oh. pretty important. <laughs> we're going to have the to bucket's go pretty with important. my grandfather. We I mean, see. like, is this bucket really that important? Uh, it's the bucket's yes. family. <laughs> the bucket family. Okay. I, I, I kneel down family. to Greg and say, <sighs> "The living." Parts of my grandmother are in that bucket. Literally, a part of my family is in it. Greg, like, <laughs> nods as though he's pretending to understand. He definitely does not understand at all, but he doesn't want... He's like, yeah, okay. Cool. And if we don't go get it, my grandfather will probably die. Oh. Because of magic. I mean, that's bad. Yeah. And he's the only family member who doesn't want to murder me. I kind of like to keep him. <laughs> I like the great that was me you well in real life. Decide. <laughs> Greg's like, what have I got myself into? Mm -hmm. Welcome. Like this guy who only has one family member that loves Welcome him. To trash here. And this is why we don't see Greg more than like this one cameo. Yeah, he's, he's like, like I'm out. Out. nope. Fuck why this. Greg this is, is gonna weird. Be I'm leaving. So as you're having this discussion, and Greg is like, okay, I guess family's important, even if it's a bucket, I suppose. Um, <laughs> uh, at this point, um, this is where I'm going to ask how important to Copernicus it is uh, to get this, uh, this bucket back with no further problems. He doesn't care uh, if it causes oh. problems. He is just it, wants the bucket back. I just mean. Is it black I'm, token? That's right? a lot. Yeah. I, 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 I would, I would go much further for a black token, but but I would take just an inspiration, uh, for, um, based on the rolls you made with the persuasion. So, uh, uh, Nazrazel has broken free of your control. Okay. Um, the question is. Is Nazrazel pretty keen on not getting summoned again mm. uh, enough to do something about this? And uh, the answer is yes. But so I would say um, if you just give me an inspiration, uh, I am happy to uh, to say that now, that we're, we're we'll 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 speed it up basically. Okay. I will Does happily, that sound I'll happily appropriate? Give the inspiration. Yeah. Okay. So one inspiration, and as you're having this discussion, um, there's again this like rushing of wind noise, and the shadow appears again out of the trees. Um, basically, like throws the bucket on the ground, like it just like clatters at your feet. Um, and then, uh is going to uh, uh, lunge at you and attempt to stab you with a, with its sword. Oh. Um, right. Because although it's it's really down, it's it's like, all right, here's the bucket. I fulfilled the deal. 
but I have potentially an opportunity to make it more than a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going to not take it. Yeah. We'll just see how huh. it goes. Um, so yeah, let's roll way. initiative. Yeah. Mm, cool. Mm -hmm. Nine. <laughs> Ooh, very good. Ooh. A one doesn't matter when it's initiative, right? It's just a one. You're going last. Yeah. yeah. Right. It means that you're the very last one, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm good with that. Uh, 22. Ooh. Damn. 27. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Rogues. <laughs> Rogues. <laughs> Yay. 19. My goodness. All right, we got some fast boys part, tonight. Part rogue. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is lunging forward and attempting to stab. I'm going to treat that as a surprise round and go first. Mm -hmm. Um, Bernie's a little woozy from the blood loss. Mm -hmm. This could end poorly. Uh, so 16, does that hit your armor class? Uh, I think it, it does. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, that's a hit. Okay, uh, and take... We'll make it a 15 psychic damage. Okay. So that there is no apparent wound. The sword is shadow. It passes through him as though it wasn't there. Um, but it does psychic damage. I am at nine. So you take damage as uh, in any case. You're like, ah. And uh, next is um, Greg with that ridiculous initiative. Uh, well, am I close enough for Stabby Stabby? Oh, yeah. Uh, then I'm going to do that. And I assume that if I succeed, I will get sneak attack because I'm going one on one with it. Oh, you have magical weapons. I have magical weapons. So you weapons. are actually able to harm it. This thing is a shadow. If you don't have magical weapons, they will just pass right through it. Do uh, I have? Oh, yeah, I do have magical oh, weapons. You right? do have magical weapons. I must look at them to remember what they are. You have a rapier of parrying, and oh, you yeah. have uh, a plus one main gauche, just a plus one short sword. But those yeah. are both magical, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Right on. Sneak okay. Your attack roll, and you get your you do get your sneak attack on this because you are um, flanking. You're coming. Yeah. Up. It's this thing's already attacking Perny, and you're coming up on it. So, all right, here we go. Go for it. Uh, nineteen. I believe a nineteen is going to hit. Yeah. Yay. It is a quite large target. Its main defense is the fact that weapons pass through it, but not magic. So where the sword strikes, it doesn't look like a normal sword stabbing someone. It kind of goes through, but there's like a magic like aura. There's like a, a, a light uh, in the shadow where the where the the blade makes contact with this two dimensional creature, uh, and that actually seems to be causing it pain. So wow. roll your damage. That's pretty Which good. Is uh, 6, 10, 15, 28. 28 damage. That's with your sneak attack, I assume? Yes. <laughs> I always forget how uh, much damage rogues do. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a and lot. you have a bonus action with your main oh ghost if you wish to hit it with the second attack. <laughs> sure, why not? The why not? Attack. Go, Greg. Uh, 25 to hit. That'll hit. Damage. Uh, one D6. Now this this one doesn't get the sneak attack. It no. just gets the one d six plus six. Eight, eight damage. So it was twenty. What was the first one? Twenty seven, maybe. I don't remember. Twenty yeah. six, twenty seven, something. Like that. I'll call it twenty seven. I think and it was twenty seven and eight is thirty five total damage. It is not pleased by that. <laughs> well, and it makes this this terrible like like otherworldly shriek noise. Basically like a Nazgul shriek uh, from that. You know how the Nazguls react when Aragorn throws fire at them? It makes that noise. Wow. Uh, 23, fetid. Alright. Um, I don't think my short bow is magical, is it? Uh, it is not. Yeah, not have a magical uh, 
uh, weapon. What you about have smelled... that fancy? What about that fancy knife I looted off of the dead Ooh. cultist? Mm. What an interesting idea! Ooh. Do you want to try and stab him with that? I do want to try and stab him. With that. <laughs> uh, go for it. Your attack roll with that because it is a knife. It'll be the same as your knife attack. So that's what I figured. Yeah. Plus eight uh, to hit. So make a roll. Uh, thirteen and eight is twenty-one. That is a hit. Okay. Do I roll damage? And if so, what am I rolling? First of all, remember that you get packed tactics on a close-up attack like oh, this. Oh, that's right. I have advantage. Let's yep, try so again. roll again, with, just in case you get a nat 20. Uh, oh, I also, so I also better, get that, nothing but... that matters. Um, it does, because you should roll in case you get a nat 20. So roll again for each of your two attacks. Uh... And if no, they were both terrible. Then, Extremely okay. bad. One did no nat 20s? No, I just went up to a 16 on my second roll. That's okay. So now you can uh, roll your damage, which is, uh, I assume you're putting your Hunter's Mark on him. Yes. So your damage uh, is a D6 and a D4 plus oh, 6. Okay, it's a D6 this time. Uh, I think your, your uh, my, my regular Hunter's Mark are is D4s, always a D6. But... Yeah, but the Hunter's Mark does a D6. Okay. Okay, so D6 plus how much? Plus the D4. So roll the D4, D4 for the dagger D4. and the yeah, D6 yeah. for Hunter's Mark. Yeah. yeah. And oh, then add no. 6 to the total. Didn't roll very well. 5 and 6, 11 damage. Uh, oh, 5 total on both dice? Uh, I got, uh, yeah. Yeah. So 11 damage? Yep. That's but still at least I can hurt. adding up. It I did work. It. That is yeah. a plus one dagger if you want to know nice. that down for yourself. Nice. Free upgrade. Nice. Um, and uh, I forget who was next. I'm gonna, I was actually other... going to ask. So I rolled a four for initiative, and I was wondering if I could use my last inspiration to pump that. Uh, sure. I'm down. I'll mark it off. Seven. No good. Better? <laughs> uh, so you had so Glorpa had like a one plus. Yeah, I've got nine, uh, four basically. So four, seven, nine, and then what was Tromlin's? Nineteen. Tromlin. So yeah, next. I thought I, I knew someone else rolled a teen. Uh, so not, Tromlin is next. Um, I'm gonna cast Guiding Bolt at this motherfucker. That's a, that's a good, that that's a good nice. thing to do to people. Uh, I, uh, does that have a hit roll? I think it does. It's a ranged attack, and I'm gonna cast it. Using my last second level spot slots and do a little more damage. Nice. Uh, and it'll be radiant damage as well. It will indeed. <laughs> uh, Seems like a good thing against demons. So yeah. make your ranged spell attack. Especially ones made out of shadow. <laughs> Probably a good pivot. So a ranged spell attack. Um, it's twenty. What do I add seven. to the roll? I don't have. You, you have a plus seven for your range, your spell attack bonus. Oh, okay, then twenty three. That is a hit. Let me get another D6. 5d6 damage. So radiant damage. Let's get some sixes, please. Okay. So that's 10, 16, 21 points of damage. All radius. Okay, so um, the the beam of, of radiant light coming from uh, Tromlin's holy symbol uh, blasts into this shadow from the side, and like like a bright light coming into a shadowy place, the shadow is gone. Nice. Uh, and uh, Copernicus, you hear uh, his voice in your head as he disappears. Is then I... Give Grand out eight hit points back. <laughs> yeah, can I cure uh, wounds on him? Yeah, you can. Uh, you want to cast that it, as a, a second level or higher? Oh, lay yeah. hands on Grandpa. It's time for Gorpa to lay hands. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, how many of these do I roll? D8? Uh, it depends on what level you want to cast it at. You can cast it at any oh. level, one, two, three, or four. I would like uh, to do four, because he's really hurting, right? Yeah, like you only have one fourth level point. slot, but you could, uh, you can use it. Don't, don't yeah, use LZ three. 
Yeah, yeah. Three, so yeah. Yeah, I'll do three. Uh, so roll 3d8. Okay. Three. Uh, 11. Uh, 12, 15, 14, 17. 17. Thank you. It doubled me up. You're welcome. So I think the moment that this is this is resolved, Perny's going to run over and pick up the bucket and like stroke it and mumble to it for a little bit <laughs> before he reattaches it to his waist. And just uh, add, add waist. another five hit points too, because that was it was uh, not just the D8, but you also get to add your spell casting ability to that oh. heal spell. So. Oh, nice. Thirty nine. So plus the one. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he's and then he'll turn to the party after he's reunited with the bucket and say, "Thank you very much for your help." Very and hey, I got a free identify out of my on my dagger out of that, so good yeah. deal for me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we can. So from the, from here, Greg we'll is. Now. Yeah, Greg is like, okay, well, we didn't end up going that way, so it's not far now to the bandit camp. And yeah. hey, you just you fought your first demon, I assume. How's it feel? Uh, uh I guess it probably was my first demon, right? <laughs> yeah, you uh, don't run into that sort of thing very often in the woods. Uh that it was it was neat. I stabbed him. Uh you stabbed I him real good. good. I had no idea if that was gonna work or not. It was pretty good. That was a good stab. <laughs> that feels pretty you did good. a great job, Greg. You're a good boy. Oh <laughs> I always love to know that I've done a good job and that I'm a good the boy. The highest praise. <laughs> I will. I, I travel often, and I share stories of my travels, and I will tell everybody about the bravery and heroism of the hero of the North, El Dago. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just called you El Dago. Oh, El Dago. Oh, oh. That's so nice. And I would like to um uh cut either I'll use a page from my book, or maybe I'll just like cut a piece of my cloak off or something. But I'd like to cut him a little uh mask. Like the non canonical <laughs> Elgato illustration has. And I know nice. that he already has that just with his fur coloring from the illustration, but I would still like him to have a little eye mask he can wear. Uh -huh. Aww, that's so give, nice. give him an extra point of AC or something. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas AC stands for absolute cuteness. Yes. Aww. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> yes. He's a cool boy. Mm. I like well, Greg, cool. Greg knows that like time is getting on here and he's, so, he's supposed to be, you know, have, have, quickly taking you to a camp like yesterday and then yeah. going back to to uh to continue the things he was doing to help his people so he is kind of going all right well we're almost there i will show you this camp and then he's doing that dog I thing where you run then... ahead and you look back to make sure they're still following then you run a little bit more ahead and you look back yeah, <laughs> yeah you're sort of like going, come on come on come on yeah we gotta go we gotta go this is important you run over and show them your leash. You put your leash in your teeth and run over and show it to them and then run over to the other way. You're like, come on. He <laughs> um, knew what he wanted. It's impossible to know. Uh, so you can lead them up uh, a nearby hill um, and find a good vantage point to uh, look over this, this uh, lovely hidden little uh, fort in the trees. This place is a kind of a Robin Hood treehouse uh, set up pseudo Ewok thing where there's like lots of little platforms in a bunch of the trees and some buildings further down and it's all connected with like rope uh, bridges and stuff um, uh, to make it nice and defensible mm -hmm. uh, and there are indeed uh, bandits hanging out here and they look like the bandits uh, that you saw dead in the road they do not look like the Night Slayers um, or the I, ones um... you saw dead at the other camp can I common yep. sense check to take off my cultist disguise before we approach the camp? Oh, I assume you took it off last night, okay. but yeah, sure. Yeah, just in case. I assumed you took it off as soon as you were done with that whole yeah. uh, charade. He's yeah. just been walking around um, with his chest out, no problem. Yeah. 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 And so everybody everybody gets a good look at this place, and uh, I'd like some perception checks as you're, as you're scouting out and trying to see what you can see. Uh, 15. <laughs> I rolled a one. I fall oh, no. over. <laughs> I roll a dirty, a a dirty one. twenty. So I got. I, I roll look, on top I, of bedded. I stare directly into the sun. Sixteen. <laughs> uh, I roll a twenty-three. Hey, um, I hear a nat twenty, or is that a dirty twenty? For dirty me? twenty. Dirty, dirty 20. twenty. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, uh, 
So Greg rolls the best, and Greg gets a good look at like sort of where the defenses are. But Greg doesn't uh, know what you guys are looking for specifically. So uh, I'll skip on to the rest of you for the stuff that you'll actually recognize. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the top, the high roll was that dirty twenty. No, twenty three uh, from. Oh, sorry. Besides. No, after yeah, besides after Greg. Greg. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, so there are. Um, Oh, I just realized we totally forgot to do the second poll because I was going to say a thing oh. and I realized we don't know what it is. So I'm going to go slightly over time because we have a poll to do. I apologize. That was my bad. Uh, I'm just going to get my shadow DM. But we'll just do this poll and then we'll end the here. Should we do this one like super fast? Like a five minute poll? Uh, it's it's a default 10 minute. Oh, okay. But we can do uh, like our post game sort of like uh, stuff that we usually. Stuff? Yeah, we'll do that while the poll's running. Oh. No? All right. Sorry, just getting the poll set up. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, uh, everyone, uh, and the players, I would like you not to look at the chat while we have our poll. And all of our participants... Uh, we have our final uh, reveal is about to happen, so uh, you can probably guess what's going to come. So please uh, get your votes in, as usual. Uh, our, uh, the usual stuff applies here. If you are uh, a subscriber, uh, you can um, uh, get double votes. And whether you're a subscriber or not, you can put extra points into this uh, through channel points or uh, bits to vote more times if you choose to do so. Uh, and we'll let that run for 10 minutes. And while that's happening, since this is gonna be where I was gonna end it with this particular reveal, I'll just quickly say the other things that you noticed, Tromlin. The big one mm -hmm. being that you spot a large hobgoblin who has a big scar across one cheek um, and where his lip is curled up because of the scar one of his fangs sticks up like an orky tusk. Uh, gotcha. And you're guessing from the descriptions and from the obviousness that that's probably Shagrat Scarfang. Here it um, And secondly, uh, you're going to notice that in the center of the camp, um, uh, where there is a big fire uh, pit and a lot of... Uh, people congregated and stuff, there is a uh, pole in the ground with a figure uh, of an individual bound and gagged, tied to that pole. And the identity of that person is going to be decided by the chat uh, in just Ooh. a few minutes. Ooh. Um, so I will let that continue to run down time. And with that, uh, I'll reveal that when we're finished here. But in the meantime, please join me in thanking uh, our uh, amazing uh Guest star, Yay. Sam Logan, creator of Sam and Fuzzy. Aww. Thanks for coming, Sam. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And his character, Greg, who is absolutely a good boy. I mean, yeah. Greg, good boy. I, I, assume, I assume at this point Greg is, is running off to do his important. Greg was Greg. supposed to take these guys yeah. to to the, you know, the deal that he was supposed to do. Uh, he you know, was supposed to do it yesterday and uh, like a day and a half ago. But these guys wanted to go to a different bandit camp. So you have done what you were agreed to do, and you have other other things to do to look after your people. Um, and frankly, I think you've probably had enough of this crazy fairies <laughs> and demons shit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've got I've had a lot of emotional scarring. Uh, you know, but I'm sure you know I'll remember for about five seconds, and then <laughs> and then a squirrel will come oh, by. Uh huh. Um, I mean, that was going to be my write out if there was an inconvenient timing uh, to write Sam out. It was going to be a squirrel runs by and Greg just goes, squirrel, and it's gone. And we're like, <laughs> inevitable, really. Um, <laughs> but uh, this may not Holy be the last we see one. of Greg, right? Ooh. That's we may, true. We may have cameos again. And yeah, I will say we'll that in the, our way. in the near future, probably not next game, but sometime in the near future, I have already lined up. Uh, our next cameo, and I can nice. uh, reveal that uh, uh, David Malky, the Yay. creator of Wonder Woman, oh, is going to join us. That's rad. Yay. And I won't oh. give away anything about his character, but it's great. 
<laughs> so not a great right, wizard, Maven Delkey. That. Maven Delkey. Ooh. Um, so uh, once again, thank you to our guest star, and thank you, of course, to all of our regular players. Uh, this is a great time for shout outs. If anybody has any projects or anything uh, on the boil right now that you would like to share. Uh, and while you're thinking about that, uh, Alina, I'd love to show the sketch card from last week. Oh, yeah, our, sure. I'll uh, see if our I can last week's sketch card winner. Um, so our first sketch card winner went to Paul, I believe. Mm. Uh, and we now have that sketch card uh, to be sent out. So we're just going to show it off to the chat. Yeah, I think I got it here. Um, oh, so you guys can see one. this. Hang on a this second. is an example of what you guys are going to uh, receive. This is a, just so that everybody knows, this is a draw for subscribers. Uh, so each uh, game we're going to have a draw. Uh, and one of our subscribers is going to uh, receive uh, a is. lovely sketch from all of our artists. Our uh, cameras are still a little messed up because we have one extra person, but you can see the sketch card. That's all that matters. Yeah, I don't think we actually fixed up that OBS for the for the guests. Not for the guests, okay. yeah. Um, and uh, I do believe it is uh, Lady Toad and Yoshi that has received our next one, and that sketch card will be coming uh, soon, and we'll probably show it off on next week, uh, next game stream. Um, let's see, there we go. I can see it now. I hope everybody likes these ridiculous drawings. I really like Randy's drawing of uh, Diomedes. Oh, yeah. Diomedes. It's mm -hmm. very I, good. I, oh, cool. I quite like the two hats. That's also excellent. <laughs> yeah. uh, I love I, the holder. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Philodendron. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Ugna oh. enjoying a pastry. Clearly one of... Oh, uh, that's clearly... Yeah, and then, uh, oh yeah, I didn't even notice the the horrible goose is horrible like goose. looking for looking <laughs> yeah. for revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Haunts me to this day. Yeah. You guys never saw the body; it just disappeared. Yeah, exploded in feathers. Explode, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Is it gone for good? Uh, who knows? Um, uh, so yeah, uh, for those of you who maybe consider subscribing, please do. Uh, you get uh, the potential to win one of these sketch cards. You get access to the subscriber-only Discord, behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, and of course, you get to watch everything without ads and all that good stuff as well. Uh, any stuff anyone wants to shout out? Um, anyone? I have, a, I have a book coming out at the end of next month a new book of microfiction called The House of Untold Stories. Uh, and it's this huge mix of stories of different genres. And you actually, like, read through the book. Like, uh, the story titles are, like, doors. And you actually, like, navigate a house and, like, go through different rooms. And the rooms are pocket universes with weird stories in them. And it's all very fun and quick to read. And it's coming from Andrews McNeil Publishing, House of Untold Stories, out on August 31st. That is really cool. Heck yes. Yeah. Hey, looking yeah. forward to that one. Any other project shoutouts? Um... I will do my usual shout outs. Uh, I am doing another stream tomorrow at 1 p.m. PDT, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, which is let me tell you about my character, where my friend Maggie and I will randomly generate and draw ridiculous D&D characters. Uh, and Meg will yell at us from the background. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun, so if you uh, want to come check it out, be tomorrow. And then on Wednesday on twitch.tv slash something5e, uh, I'm on the stream Something Wicked, where I play Mikey, a dragonborn artificer, uh, who has been cursed and is a lich, sort of. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a uh, sort of gothic horror game uh, set in a cool D&D universe. So check us out on Wednesdays. Um, if I can do... Uh, it's not for me, it's my spouse. My spouse uh, does a thing called uh, Out of Context Popeye on Twitter. And uh, they also have a site, it's uh, Lost Dailies, D A I L I E S, dot gumroad.com. They have for free download, it's basically storylines from the construct Popeye that haven't been reprinted. Uh, there was a gap oh. in time between when EC Seeker died and Bud Sagendorf took over the comic in around 58, 59, um, that for the most part has never had an official collection beyond like in some Dell comics in the early 40s. 
And so they've been going through and finding all these storylines. Some are really ahead of the time and, and very fun. And so they have, I think, six, they have um, five volumes of daily strips and they have a volume of Sunday strips. Uh, like, again, they're free to download because we don't want Popeye. They can't sell that. But so if you want to see kind of uh, comics that haven't really been reprinted in a long time, uh, lostdailies.gumroad.com. Cool. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, okay, all good. I'll, I'll do my usual uh, quick shout out and thanks to our shadow DM Dan. Uh, Thank you for getting and... that back. Appreciate that. Indeed, I quite love the 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 whole thing that uh, that the, there was a, a brief risk that Copernicus might have the curse undone. <laughs> I know, we but we've managed to happen. avoid that and recursed him, so it's yes. great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> make sure your grandpa stays cursed. Yep. <laughs> Important. So we did it, everyone. Grandpa's still cursed. Uh, and I do believe that poll is ending in like a couple of seconds. Oh, oh, so we'll some, some last second super votes coming in here. I am and nervous. Some Jack. Done. And some Jack. <laughs> <laughs> And done. Okay, so um, let me just quickly pull up. Uh, is it safe to look at the chat? File. I believe it is now safe to look at the chat. No, right. it's not. Don't. Oh, okay, no, I'm not looking. Now it's safe. To look ah, at the okay. <laughs> okay, and uh, I just it's have too many. Me. Ah, I almost saw oh. it. <laughs> that's okay. I'm about to reveal it anyway. I just, uh, I just need the name that is uh, in my mess of files that's all over the place here. <laughs> yes, I found it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so as you're all looking, you've spotted Shagrat. You realize that uh, this is definitely the camp that you want and that he's there. You're going to definitely get to um, uh, to get the... Uh, uh, the stuff that you need to know. Um, but tied to this post in the center of uh, the town, where the heck is the list of names? Okay, unfortunately, I put on the, uh, what I put in the chat was... Uh, vague and I need the actual name and now I can't find the stupid file because ah. you know that's just just a uh, par for the course uh, I will find that <laughs> daddy mm -hmm. All right, Alina, I can't find your campaign notes, so I'm going to go in a different direction slightly. Oh, All right. Okay. I was going to um, see. <laughs> so, uh, tied to this uh, post um, is a dwarf, uh, Tromlin, that you don't recognize. Um, some kind of hostage in the middle of the camp. Um, and, uh, oh, no, sorry, Tromlin might know him. Good. I, it's is good. It it's Sal? Tromlin's role. It is not Sal. Oh, good. Um, uh, it is uh, Sal's son. Oh, no. Uh, it is Sal's son, no. Tom. No. So, uh, yeah, so so uh, you, of course, know, uh, Tromlin, of uh, Ugna's uh, basically father figure and, and uh, best buddy who runs the, the fighting pit in Mud Hollow. Sal Shattersmith, and you are shocked to see his son, uh, Tom Shattersmith, uh, tied to that post in the middle of the oh, bandit no. camp. And that is where we're going to leave it. No, he's my trusted friend. I spent points on him. Tom, Tom, Tom. Not Sal, not Tom. <laughs> we're going to get him out. Don't worry. We'll I got to gotta rescue this kid. And uh, the last thing I'll end with here is just to thank the chat for uh, a whole bunch of the different um, 
this wow. game and last game's uh, polls that just got revealed uh, <laughs> today include the choice of being uh, susceptible to alcohol for Tromlin. Um, the, the fact <laughs> that it was uh, Glorpa, a figure from Glorpa's past that uh, uh, Greg recognized. Oh. Ooh, there were cool. several options for who it would be in the dreams oh, that Greg neat. recognized. Nice. Uh, the identity of the hostage at Chagrat's bandit camp uh, as well. And uh, I'm already forgetting what the fourth thing was. Was it the Mykonids? Right, sorry, it was the Mykonids as opposed to um, the other possible fey folk that you might have encountered, which would have mm. potentially led to some very different encounters. Mm. And certainly less sex for Glorpa, because that was the only plan. Wow. Based on. Really? I just grabbed a butt. I feel, right like, I feel like that's why they voted for it, because they were like, well, if it's Mykonids, then that <laughs> means... Sex in my time. pocket. Yep. <laughs> we have dirty fans. So thank you everybody for coming, and we will wrap it there. We have to do another and draw. Yeah, we got to do a draw. Oh yes, we for, can do the next draw. Uh, right. Oh yeah. I've got the list. Right, right. So roll me a d12. I am rolling the d12 for the the list. Are you taking people off the list for their for a period after their first one, or are you just? Gonna uh, I'm not, but I'll on? get you to roll again if we roll one. Okay. That we've had before. At least I have for the, the first the few things marked down. I've got a six. Uh, roll again. Eight. Mm -hmm. An eight. Uh, that is Seabass the Mighty. Oh, Seabass the Mighty, you are going to receive the next sketch card, uh, which we'll try and get together uh, for next time. Okay, and uh, Lady Toad and Yoshi, uh, I think several of them are done for, for yours this yeah, time. Yeah. I don't remember if all of them are, but... Uh, Alina will throw that together in the next little while. And, yeah, and we'll send it off uh, to you. We will get it to you. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thanks very much. Bye. See you later. Bye. Thank you very much. See you. And peace out. See you next time. Bye.